Hey guys, I want to tell you about my liver. This is Marie. I'm here at a place to heal. And I uh, promised you guys that I was going to bring you a video about my some issues that I've been having with my liver. So I'm going to take you down a little road and I'm hoping that this video helps out many of you because, you know, what I know today almost killed me a couple of years ago. So I'm hoping that um, in doing this video, I can help some of you in what you're going through and stop you from going through what I went through and, um, you know, having to deal with the madness that was my life at that time. So I want to take you back to my early 20s. We're, we're going to go way back. <laughs> and um, in my early 20s, I had my gallbladder removed. Um, I had a, a bunch of problems. Um, I couldn't eat fats and I was having all sorts of problems with my gallbladder. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and a doctor suggested, it needs to go. And I said, but wait, don't I need my gallbladder? And he said, oh no, you don't need your gallbladder. You don't need your gallbladder for anything. It's one of those organs that you don't need. That is so not true. If any of you are thinking about taking your gallbladder out, I suggest you strongly watch this video to the end. Um, so I told him, I said, well, if I take my gallbladder out, am I going to have any issues? Is there going to be any problems in the future? Blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, you know, sometimes you can't digest mushrooms. Okay, FYI, no one can digest mushrooms. So um, I said, okay, well, you know, I mean, it's giving me a lot of uh, problems um, and I was, was suffering in a lot of pain. So they went ahead and cut it out. Now, um, if I regret, I, I regret very few things in life. And that is one of the things that I truly regret doing was taking my gallbladder out because it is not true that you do not need that organ and it can be taken care of. It can be fixed. It does not have to be removed unless it is just so bad so bad that you literally just can't continue forward. And normally when your gallbladder is bad, it means that your liver is also bad. So I had my gallbladder taken out in my early twenties. We're going to fast forward into my thirties. And in my thirties, I started getting really bad colic. I mean, really bad colic. Um, and for those of you who do not know what colic is, it is like, it feels like literally like your, um, they have your, your small intestines in a vice and they're just squeezing and releasing and squeezing and releasing. And it is so painful and you sweat. I mean, you just sweat and it is pain and sweat and grunching, grunching, uh, you know, pulling and, and squeezing and it is just it's a nightmare so my heart goes out to these children these babies who have colic because i'm like man i know what they're going through oh my god it is oh my god i would just literally i would bite down on a towel it would get so bad sometimes and but they didn't tell me that this was something that was caused by removing my gallbladder you know when you have your gallbladder removed that is the tank. It's the reservoir tank for the for your bile, for your liver bile. So think about this. You move into a house and you have a garage and you start storing stuff in your garage. Okay. And all of a sudden a company comes along and rips out your garage and takes that garage away. Well, now where are you going to store your stuff? You're going to store it in the house. And you start storing in the house and storing in the house. And after a while, that house gets so congested, like my house is right now, and that you can't even move. And that's exactly what happens when you remove your gallbladder. Your, go your gallbladder is basically your garage. It's where, you know, your liver, the house, stores everything. So all of a sudden, they take your gallbladder away and you're left with this liver and it starts storing its own bile inside of the liver. But what happens is, since it can't dump that bile, that bile starts to harden and it starts to get, just like you get coagulated blood in your arteries, you can get coagulated bile. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. So 
All of a sudden, fast forward again, I'm into my, my 40s and I start having serious bowel issues. I started having um, um, IBS. I started to have, um, um, you know, irritable bowel, diverculitis, all sorts of stuff that they were diagnosing me with. And of course, my diet didn't help because, you know, I was eating a lot of stuff with gluten in it, which only made things worse. And I was frying a lot of foods, so my liver was having to work double time. And then all of a sudden in my 40s, I had fatty liver, high cholesterol, bowel stagnation, and cirrhosis of the liver. And um, eventually my body just stopped working. And, uh, you know, so in my desperation to not have to buy an early casket, I uh, attended a Gerson, uh, Gerson class and went for a three-day uh, Gerson class. And I started doing coffee enemas. And I changed my diet and everything else. But something very strange started to happen is every time that I would do coffee enemas or every time that I would do any kind of cleanse, um, I kept passing thousands and thousands, I'm talking thousands, millions even, of these tiny little, what looked like tiny little yellow eggs. Some of them were long, oblong, skinny. Some of them were uh, P-shaped. Some of them were smaller. But there was thousands of them. And um, I, for the longest time, believed oh, these are parasite eggs and they're coming from my liver. So recently I had a friend that said, Marie, stop trying to figure out what those things are. For God's sake, get a fecal test and find out what it is. So um, I ended up doing that. I ended up having a fecal test done and guess what they were? It was coagulated, old coagulated liver bile matter. So all, every time I've been doing these coffee enemas, I've been literally breaking up this old bile, stagnant, hard matter that has been coming out of my liver. And it is one of the reasons I started taking um, TMG to help my liver out. And is also one of the reasons that I've been doing lemon juice every day because there's something in the lemon juice that literally breaks up this liver bile junk. And I mean, this stuff is sticky and fatty and, and it always floats. It, it floats because it's so full of fat and stagnation and, um, and you can't miss it. And a lot of people I noticed on, on uh, Facebook and on YouTube and on Yahoo and everything, they're posting these pictures of this thing and they're going, oh, these are my liver stones. Look at all these liver stones I'm passing. Those are not liver stones. Liver stones are, they're usually bigger, they're harder. Some of them are white, some of them are black, but these are yellow, the same color as liver bile. And they're, I mean, they can be anything from the size of a, a pin to the size of a BB to the size of a, a, a marble. Some of these are pretty big. And what it is, it's just all clumped together. And as the lemon juice starts hitting the liver, as you start doing these coffee enemas, it starts breaking them up and you're passing them. Now, here's the scary part. I've been doing coffee enemas for a little over a year. And every time I do coffee enemas, I get thousands of these. So it's no wonder why my liver wasn't working and all this stuff gets stagnant in your bowels and it starts to back up your bowels because these little stones, I don't really want to call them stones, this, these bile matter, this broken up bile matter as it starts coming down your intestines, if you've been eating a lot of dairy and you've ha you have all that mucus in there, it starts backing up 
and it starts causing lumps and bumps in your intestines and it starts it causes backup and the next thing that you know you have a backup in your intestines so the only way to get this moving is doing those coffee enemas to start moving that that bile that old bile matter that acid in that coffee breaks up that bile matter and starts moving it out of your liver because for those of you who don't know your liver is like number one your liver performs so many functions I had problems with my uh, my thyroid which you can kind of still see right here I mean I had my thyroid was really swollen my thyroid was not working correctly because my liver wasn't working correctly not only that but here's the biggest news of all if you start getting that congested bile matter whether you've had your gallbladder taken out or not um, I strongly suggest doing um, liver flushes Google the amazing liver and gallbladder flush by Andreas Moritz the man was a genius way beyond his time and because what ends up happening is that as we get older we should be flushing out our our you know just like you flush out your water tank in your house because you get all that matter in it it's no different your gallbladder is the same you need to flush that out and we should be flushing it out starting at 15 years old so depending on how old you are you haven't flushed that out you have backup in that liver so this year I have been doing liver flushes once a month every single month of this year you should do them once a month for a year and then after that you can go into maintenance depending on how bad your liver is but what ends up happening and like I said this is the big one is that when stuff starts getting congested in your liver I hate to tell you this guys but shit rolls downhill so what ends up happening is it goes into your gallbladder if you don't have a gallbladder it's gonna keep going and it's gonna go into your pancreas and your spleen so once it starts backing up in your pancreas you end up with you got it diabetes so now you're having to deal with diabetes and you got all these people out there going but I'm eating healthy I'm juicing I'm doing all this why isn't my diabetes numbers getting under control because I can assure you your pancreas is full of that yucky yellow nasty bile matter those little tiny stones but if you continue forward it not only harms your pancreas but they also get into your spleen because you know your spleen is one of the your largest cleaners in the body it has to clean everything and once it hits your spleen and you get weakness in your spleen your spleen is connected to your heart and you start weakening your heart and they also say that people who have had their gallbladders removed are at a higher chance a much higher chance studies have been done and proven that they are at much higher chance and a much higher risk of having heart attacks and that is why you've just now I've now explained the whole chain of command and why that happens so it's very very important for you to clean your liver if you can look at yourself in the mirror and the whites of your eyes are yellowish in any way shape or form do liver flushes do coffee enemas if you can look worried see that line going up and down right there that is a liver line that's telling me right there my liver I smashed my finger with a hammer <laughs> my nail <laughs> if you look worried and you can you see that line right there that is a liver line that's telling you your liver not so good you know if you're having problems and you're eating and you're having really bad problems after you eat and a lot of pain or if you have pain underneath your right rib get on those livers now because let me tell you the liver will take you down my liver almost killed me and uh, I recently lost a family member to liver cancer because she waited way too long 
So I'm putting out this video to help anyone out there that's got liver issues. Um, you know, you have to love your liver. You have to. And those of you with kidney problems, also the liver. Because the problem is that the liver has to filter out all these toxins. And once it filters the toxins, then it sends the junk to the kidneys. But if your liver is congested, it's full of this junk, it cannot work. And if it cannot work, all that junk just kind of passes by it and goes to the kidneys. And the kidneys are like, whoa, this is too much junk for me to handle. I can't handle all this. And then you, you stress the kidneys out and then your blood pressure starts going through the roof. And the next thing you know, you're just like, why do I have all this high cholesterol? Why do I have all this high blood pressure? Why can I not, not digest my food? Why do I have diabetes? Why does my spleen hurt? Your spleen is underneath your, your left rib, by the way. You know, why does it hurt? Why does my bowels hurt? You can trace everything back, connect the dots right back to the liver. So liver flushes, um, any herbs that you can take, milk thistle for the liver is awesome. You know, lemon juice, straight lemon juice to start breaking up all that old bile is wonderful. Coffee enemas, the acid in that and that coffee is going to break up all that old stagnant stuff and move it out of there. You really need to clean up the liver. And I cannot tell you how utterly, utterly important it is to clean your liver. And I had to find out the hard way. It almost killed me. I was on my deathbed before I learned. And I talked to a lot of people. So I really want to stress this, you guys. I talk to a lot of people where I tell them, it's your liver. You need to start cleaning your liver. And they're like, oh, no, it's not my liver. It's okay. You know, oh, no, I'm not going to do coffee enemas. It's just not. And then they call me like three months later going, Marie, it's gotten worse. I can't eat. I can't digest anything. I can't. And I'm like, it's your liver. I can't stress that enough. It's your liver. You know, if you go back to all the greats, you're going to notice that Hilda Clark cleat liver flushes. Andreas Moritz do liver flushes. Um, Gerson do coffee enemas for your liver. All the, all the greats will tell you, hit your liver, clean your liver, clean your liver, because your liver is ever so important. And I hope that after this video, I think I've ranted enough. After this video, I hope that I have gotten through to you guys on how important this is for you to do. All right. Till next time, please stay happy, stay healthy, and show your liver some love.